Um, I want to thank the Departments of Natural Resources and Agriculture for hosting the CWD Symposium. I'm really happy to have an opportunity to be here and to share with you the Wisconsin experience with CWD. Um, I wanted to kind of start off with a, an interesting twist and um, maybe start off by asking you folks, how many of you in here are uh, fans of blues music? Buddy Guy, all right, Jimmy Vaughn, um, B.B. King. Well, considering that we are um, like an hour outside of um, Detroit, Detroit has a pretty rich history in the blues music scene. Um, John Lee Hooker is probably one of the um, more famous uh, blues musicians. I am myself a, a blues fan, and so I thought I'd start off by uh, sharing with you a little uh, a little CWD ditty. Um, <laughs> and this is going to maybe require some participation from you. you. Think about blues music and the classic uh, harmonica or guitar riff that goes, da na 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 na. You got that, right? I need you to do that while I sing. I'm going to point to you, and you do that, da na 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 na. Okay? And then I'm going to, so I'll point when I, all right, here we go. Let me tell you a story about CWD. It was first found in Wisconsin, the year pre-2003. The news was unwelcome, that's easy to say. The first wild detection east of the mighty Mississippi. <laughs> I got the blues. Thank you for enlightening, enlightening me in that. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to have a little bit of fun with this topic. As everybody's um, said, it's definitely a serious topic, something to um, take seriously, but it also weighs heavily on your heart and soul as a, as a wildlife professional. And so in Wisconsin, now that we've been dealing with this disease for 15 years, we've, um, we like to bring music and, to, and levity into the situation, lymph nodes roasting in an open fire during Christmas season. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So thank you for that. Um, all right, so I have a lot of ground to cover here. I'm going to be speaking really fast. We got 15 years of CWD um, in in Wisconsin. Um, I like to think of it uh, with these four phases, which kind of they definitely do overlap with Dr. Fisher's um, phases that he identified yesterday during his talk. So we have our first five years of our initial response to the after the disease was detected. That was followed by a stakeholder process and then the development of our CWD response plan, which we then implemented for a five-year period and then um, engaged uh, in a review of that process and that kind of brings us to the present, present tense. So I'm going to walk us through this real um, as best I can. So basically, uh, you know, and thank you to a lot of the speakers have already highlighted a lot of the things here in, in Wisconsin. Um, and I could probably just like stop here and say, you have any questions? Because <laughs> I feel like there's definitely a lot covered, but um, that's, and rightly so. I mean, we've been experiencing CWD for quite some time, but you know, we back in 1999 and 2001, we did embark upon uh, statewide surveillance. This is motivated by our increased awareness by the fact that we knew that uh, CWD positive elk from out west had been brought into our state. So um, we, st we embarked upon statewide surveillance around those known facilities, as well as in areas where we knew that there were high deer densities, as well as um, a high uh, activity in baiting and feeding. And over that first three-year period, we did sample over 1,000 deer. Then it was in the, uh, February of 2002 when we uh, got the devastating news that CWD was, in fact, detected in our wild deer population in um, outside of Mount Horeb in Dane County. It was three two and a half year old bucks, all of which one out of three had clinical symptoms. So two out, two out of three looked perfectly healthy. And you saw a picture of one of them on today. <clears throat> and so we embarked upon right away uh, emergency response um, authorities. We kicked off a, a huge public information process. We had over 1,400 people attend a meeting at the Mount Horeb High School. This is a picture of the auditorium. We solicited experts from out west, including Dr. Mike Miller. We issued 
uh, permits to landowners in the, in the lobby to start removing deer right away to contribute to our surveillance efforts. And so we also um, uh, established an incident command center at one of our service centers, and we began in earnest collecting uh, deer off the landscape. We had department sharpshooting, and um, we got permission from landowners. We issued landowner permits. This is basically, um, you know, demonstrates the fact that around those three index cases, we identified a surveillance zone. It was a 12-mile radius. We uh, collected deer within that 12-mile radius. In the end, the picture on the right um, shows a picture of um, where all the additional positive detections were that we found. So. Uh, we removed over 500 animals. We found 15 more positives. And one thing that was demonstrated through that effort is that the disease was not uh, not evenly distributed. It was clustered as um, as would be expected. So after we got a, a sense of um, of that, we then formed an interagency task force. So it was the Department of Natural Resources, our Department of Agriculture, and the Department of Health. We established a, a goal to eradicate the disease from the state and these various uh, management strategies to try to get at that goal. So con continuing to conduct testing to try to get a handle on distribution and prevalence, depopulating um, within that known area of infection, as well as seeking to reduce the populations in the adjacent areas, and implementing a baiting and feeding ban. And also at the time, there wasn't really a lot that was known about CWD in the, in the realm of CWD research, so definitely had that as a high priority um, uh, management strategy. In order for us to be able to implement these management strategies, and um, we had some a special legislative session that was held in May of 2002, and also our Natural Resources Board in June of 2002, we enacted um, special authorities for um, being able to eradicate the disease, use special methodologies like sharpshooting, um, shooting from vehicles, and also the establishment of these um, CWD management zones where we had an eradication zone where we set the goal at zero deer, um, bounded by then the intensive harvest zone, and then that was bounded by the herd reduction zone. So basically different gradations of trying to um, bring the deer populations down um, and re reduce deer densities um, from outside those index, that index area. And then through the summer, we had summer hunts. We um, continued our sharpshooting through that summer, and then in the fall of 2002, we uh, conducted our first sweep of, of statewide surveillance, and over 40,000 samples were collected. That is the highest number of uh, samples we've collected since CWD was detected. And then also in 2002 was when Illinois, the first Illinois, Illinois' first CWD wild deer was detected, as well as our detection in a new area of Wisconsin um, right across the border in, in southeastern part of the state. So 2002 was a pretty significant year, and we, knowing that the disease was established and that we needed to do something to try to drive that, uh, drive, that, drive that disease down, we embarked upon an environmental impact statement process. We took that out to the public. That process then informed our uh, first CWD management plan. And essentially, the, it was all about rules about eradicating the disease. Our first goal, uh, that we had in our first uh, management plan was to minimize the negative impact not only on wild deer but also captive deer, as well as the minimizing the negative impacts on those uh, people who depend upon both. And similar uh, management objectives as uh, identified through our emergency response, these just um, basically solidified them into uh, full implementation. One thing that I'd highlight here is that at the time we did um, want to learn or try to learn how it was that the disease came to Wisconsin. We wanted to know what the origin was. There were investigations into that, but eventually um, those you know, didn't lead to any like solid conclusions and we've long since um, not um, continued that pursuit. But nonetheless, back in 2003, um, and then again, you know, the enhancing the science and using that science in our in our management strategies. And so, similar management strategies that you're going to hear um, that Wyoming just identified in their plan, and I'm sure you'll hear from other states. Conducting surveillance, looking to protect human health, working with our Department of Health on Crossfield Yakub disease, and providing them with information on hunters that consume positive venison, and so they can kind of look at that and any rates of Crossfield Yakub disease. Um, communication is a really important point of emphasis. It has been from the beginning to make sure that we're providing our hunters with current information. 
so that they can make informed decisions. The uh, deer, deer disease management really, um, at the time, we really focused in on needing the use of our hunters to be able to drive down those deer populations. We can only do so much as an agency. Um, it really is about deer hunters and, and having their assistance and buy-in and helping to um, help manage the disease. So um, we embarked upon pretty expansive special seasons and providing uh, lots of hunter opportunity in our CWD zones, as well as using agency shooters to kind of augment that. Uh, this just exemplifies how we kind of approach that uh, liberalization of seasons. So, you know, Wisconsin up until 2002 had a, had a very rich tradition and culture of a nine-day gun deer season. Starting in 2002, we had 100 days of gun deer hunting. Um, and then with each year thereafter, we still had, you know, pretty significant expanded uh, hunting opportunities, but as you can see, the number of days that were provided did decrease over time. Um, this is a reflection of our continued and ongoing involvement of public participation annually and our uh, review of our deer, um, deer population, deer harvest structure, population structure, et cetera. So we, um, we basically um, listened to the public input that we receive and we adapt our management as a result of that. And so this certainly reflects that. I'd also point to the season regulations and the fact that we had earn a buck, which is a pretty significant, important tool for disease management, uh, basically requiring, required hunters to harvest an antlerless deer before they could harvest a buck. It was unlimited, so as many antlerless deer as they wanted to shoot, they could shoot as many, the same number of, of bucks. So that continued through to 2008. We also uh, had an emergency baiting and feeding ban go into effect in 2002. And then um, through uh, state statute, we have since, since 2003 have had authority um, for our agency to, um, to enact baiting and feeding bans in response to disease. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then we also had our, our sharpshooting program, which continued through the winter of 2006 slash seven. Um, and the goal of our agency culling was to remove infected deer and uh, in areas that were under hunted. And we were successful in removing more antlerless deer than hunters did. We were successful in removing more positive deer than hunt hunters did. And the overall impact of our sharpshooting was only about 2% of the overall harvest. We also um, recognize that hunters have uh, a point in which they're going to stop hunting. They only have so much venison that they want to consume. They only have so much room in their freezer. So we uh, in incorporated a couple of um, incentives and rewards into the, the early days of, of response and management. In cooperation with Whitetails Unlimited, we offered a $400 reward for positives. That reward was split between the landowners and the hunters. We also had a lottery where um, for every deer that was harvested, uh, they uh, received a $20 gift certificate to Gander Mountain if, you know, in entering in the lottery. And if they were drawn, they would get that gift certificate. We also, um, venison donation um, programs. So the venison donation program really started in the early years of our management response and continues to today. Offering a free landowner permits. So landowners in our CWD management zone, as well as hunters, had free uh, hunting opportunity. Again, the unlimited earn a buck and the extended seasons. So that brings us to 2006. So we've had five years of responding to the disease, and this 2006 is a pretty sobering year. Um, we then kind of basically looked back at our first five years and looked at it as like the five years of disease assessment. What do we know about disease distribution and prevalence? And um, as a result of that, we basically came to the sobering conclusion that uh, we did not meet our, we did not get as far as we had hoped we would as, as in meeting, um, reducing the deer populations as well as um, meeting our, uh, and reducing the deer populations or having an impact on the disease. So then that um, conclusion then led us to reevaluate and reestablish a goal of, of containing the disease. And if, we can, if we're successful in containing the disease, then we could still maybe seek to eradicate it. But in order to even carry that forward, we also recognize that the tools that we might need to, to use to get to that end needs buy-in from the public. And so we started, um, we embarked upon our first 
citizen process, which was the stakeholder advisory group process, which was a group of 18 citizens that had vested interest in DEER to participate in a, a process to help us identify um, what our goal should be and what our management into the future should look like. And through that process, they did a look at the spectrum from doing nothing to eradicating the disease. And through that process, which is a six month process, they basically landed in the middle to try to um, control the spread. So with that information in hand, we then embarked upon the development of our second CWD response plan, which was a CWD management plan for a period of five years. We brought it to our Natural Resources Board um, in 2009, and at that time they said that the decision was, well, let's, um, let's hit pause on this and let's, let's take this plan out and have it reviewed by an expert panel because um, the plan might not be going far enough as far as um, managing the disease. And as a result of that expert panel review, um, that was the conclusion that the plan wasn't going far enough towards management. So we actually changed the title of our plan from a management plan to a response plan. And we also changed the time frame from being a five-year time frame to a 15-year time frame because, because of the slow nature of the disease, five years isn't, an, isn't enough time to be able to affect change. And so um, we now have a, a CWD response plan for a 15-year time frame with a required um, re to conduct reviews every five years. So quickly going through the response plan itself, <clears throat> this is the goal, minimizing the area of Wisconsin where CWD occurs and the, and the number of infected deer in the state. The plan has six objectives and 24 corresponding action items. The first objective is preventing new introductions. So that's you know essentially looking at things like, uh, the action items look at things like carcass movement, baiting and feeding. The second objective, monitoring and responding to new, new areas of disease. So conducting surveillance and once we find detect new areas, responding to that, to that new detection. Controlling distribution and intensity of the disease. <clears throat> this uh, again looks towards the deer herd reduction and really looking towards hunting as the, the primary tool. And making public outreach uh, a priority and specifically in our plan, we had an action item to work with a, a, a communications firm and through that endeavor, we did have a campaign known as Hunt Harvest Help. We also had a corresponding website known as nocwd.com. And through that process, um, we we're basically just trying to share information as well as dis dispel any myths. And the biggest myth that probably had precipitated over the course of time was that our hunting public grew to believe that our agency wanted to eradicate the deer herd, when in fact what our goal was was to eradicate the disease. But um, nonetheless, so we um, had some, some work to do to try to um, improve that perception. Also addressing the needs of our customers through um, making hunting available, working with the food pantry programs. Um, also, you know, it's important to involve the, the public in your strategies and your, your management approach. And so um, a couple of things that we did include weighted surveillance where we work with our taxidermists, try to get at that adult buck uh, component of the herd, but also involving them in the, in the process and in the actual response. Also in the northwestern portion of the state, we have had a citizen advisory committee now in effect since 2012. So um, involving the public right away upon detection is a really important lesson that we've learned and um, continue to apply today. But this, and then this group continues to be active. And then there's always a desire for information and um, Similar to QDMA's efforts, the department also has a, a document that we develop on recommendations for reducing spread. Basically, uh, all the voluntary actions that hunters and citizens of the state can take um, to prevent the risk of spreading CWD. And then the last objective that we have was an, is enhancing scientific information. So we work really closely with our university partners, with our partners at the National Wildlife Health Center and other states as well. We have a very significant tissue archive. Um, I can put a plug out there right now. If there's researchers out there that want access to tissue, we have it <laughs> and we're willing to work with you. Um, okay, so that's the response plan. So it went into effect in 2010. Now that brings us to 2012, and that was the time frame when our governor uh, hired uh, our dear trustee. So it was Dr. James Kroll and his colleagues, Dr. Um, Gwynn and Dr. Alt. 
And they they were basically commissioned by the the governor to um, review the Wisconsin's uh, deer management and bring it into the 21st century. So this is 2012, and uh, and through through that public process of the of the the deer trustee report actually had over 60 recommendations. Um, 14 of those recommendations were specific to CWD, including one of the recommendations was that Wisconsin should should adopt a more passive approach to CWD management. In addition to that, uh, the changes that were implemented included going from our uh, deer management unit structure to a uh, county-based management structure. So that, that's a big change. It's something that we had in place for a long time, but now we're county-based. Along with that, too, came a county uh, deer advisory council framework. So that's essentially citizens of the state that um, in every county that uh, work with the department on deer management, including CWD. We had in the CWD management zone was eliminated upon implementation of the Deer Trustee Report recommendations. And essentially we accepted uh, this as an endemic area of our state. And instead we now have what's known as CWD affected areas, which are effect, essentially CWD affected counties. So that means um, counties that have had detections of either of CWD in either wild or captive, but also counties that are adjacent to those. So, um, <clears throat> so that's our new new framework. So the CWD, so that uh, the Deer Trustee Report implementation process then um, led us the next change in our timeline and CWD management and response um, came in in 2015 and 2016. So 2015 was the first five years of implementation of our plan. It brought with it uh, the time to review that plan, and we did that through um, both an internal and external process. So the internal process is a group of um, awesome staff in the state that implement all the field operations. They're the experts in the department um, as far as how to respond to CWD and implementing the strategies on the landscape. We conducted an internal review where we reviewed all of the objectives and action items, and through that process, we did identify some key successes We've been able to we act upon at least 20, 22 out of 24 of the action items to, to some level of achievement. We've excelled in meeting the needs of our customers. We have a huge uh, number of, of deer that have been sampled. We make uh, sampling accessible to the hunters as well as it's free testing. And then we continually work towards trying to reduce that turnaround time for test results. But our key challenges that we identified is, is clearly the number of CWD positive detections. They're continuing to, uh, we're continuing to detect the CWD at higher levels, as well as the distribution and prevalence is increasing. And it did so over that first five year time frame. Additionally, our funding limitations that have um, certainly contributes to challenges in trying to respond to disease, as do social political factors and having that um, ability to fully implement the plan is really um, dependent upon that, and we've we've not um, effectively been able to respond to CWD in that first five-year time frame. <clears throat> so then, also in, in 2015, however, why this was all kind of occurring, we knew that we needed to embark upon our review. Then there was some legislative proactivity in the spring of, of 2016, and through that legislative proactivity that you know, the department needs to do more, be more aggressive, our governor then um, issued a directive in May. And, and through, that, through that directive, he um, basically uh, directed our agency to work with the public on our CWD uh, response and our, and our management plan, also do a comprehensive study in, um, south, in the southwestern portion of the state and then um, develop quicker testing turnaround time. So the governor's directives led to our CWD response plan review process and that was uh, started last fall in October. It was uh, a group, it's a group of um, 14 agencies and organizations that are, have vested interest in, in DEER. We had a series of meetings to review all the, recommend, all the action items in the plan. They developed recommendations, over 60 of them. Those 60 recommendations were taken out to the public in uh, January. And then uh, final recommendations were developed in February. And just uh, in March of this year, um, we were able to uh, take those forward and get that approved by our Natural Resources Board. Uh, we have a series of, so basically we had 24 action items, now we have 67, many of which are like reaffirming of the action items that we already had. 
But um, we also have some new action items like working with our adjacent states. So um, in addition to Illinois, which is a previously identified action item, now we're you know, interested and we want to work um, broadly beyond um, that border, but also with adjacent states on all sides. So happy to be here today um, towards that end, as well as the fact that we're um, hosting a CWD symposia at the upcoming Midwest Fish and Wildlife Conference in January, and that will have a Midwestern focus. And another new action item is having a template. When you get a new CWD detection, whether it's captive or wild, how do you respond? What's the operational plan? Having that action um, item template is something that we're working on. So we have an implementation plan on this new 60-some uh, action items that uh, we're, we're finalizing. And then we will be giving an update to our Natural Resources Board on that in, in December, as well as every year we'll be providing annual updates from here on out. So that, I was hoping I'd have time to uh, give a quick overview on what the state of CWD in Wisconsin. Um, I have three minutes, so. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, 43 CWD affected counties and, um, but they used to overlap with our, with our baiting and feeding ban. That's no longer the case. So we used to have a complete like one-to-one -one ratio of, of um, CWD affected counties and baiting and feeding bans. However, um, with new legislative amendment, now we have the ban has been lifted in 15 of those counties. An example of that is up in the northwestern part of the state. We're CWD, we have one detection. We no longer have a baiting and feeding ban because we haven't had any more detections since then. So that's kind of the, the I guess, the premise for why the change uh, transpired. We've tested over 200,000 deer in the state. We have over 3,500 positives. Um, we are seeing increasing trends in prevalence and distribution as has already been identified by previous speakers. We are continuing to have uh, carcass disposal as a, as a significant challenge and something that's ongoing and we're just issued a survey two weeks ago to try, try to get to that end of providing options and information out to hunters on where it is that they can dispose of their carcass waste as well as to meat processors. And then the fact that there's deer refuges, we know that there's areas in the state that have high, uh, that have CWD, but we, and we have high deer populations, and those certainly are harboring disease. <clears throat> Our distribution over the course of time um, is now not only in the south, southern portion of the state, but it radiates up through the central Wisconsin River Valley, and then we have that um, outlier up in the northwestern portion of the state. We were able to, this is just for the southern portion um, of our state and we, the population trend and at the time CWD is detected and then we implemented management strategies, you can see that the trend started down. But since 2013, it has continued to go up just because of the, the changes in um, our management approach. And as Brian Richards already highlighted, you can see that our sampling um, effort over time has, has gone down, whereas the correlating number of CWD positives has gone up. Our statewide surveillance plan is, this is what it looks like for this year. Each circle is a 10 mile radius around a positive, either uh, captive or wild. And that's where we can talk and focus our, our surveillance. We are expanding onto county surveillance as well. That's what all the brown areas are. The green area is weighted surveillance. Where we're working with taxidermists and trying to uh, get at that uh, adult buck cohort. We also are responding to electronic registration. We no longer have in-person registration, so getting our hands on deer and CWD samples is more challenging. So we're, we're, um, mess we're messaging more um, to try to compel hunters to um, get their deer samples so we can continue to, to track prevalence and distribution. We're also trying to make that a convenient endeavor for our hunters by providing these self-service kiosks. There's 40 of them in the state where they can drop off their head and their information and, and we take it from there. We uh, also provide free hunter service testing. So anybody in the state, whether you're in our CWD surveillance zone or not, um, if you're out, you know, we, will, uh, we will test your adult deer at, at your request. And then the most important way for us to detect disease is through sick deer reporting. And we um, have a, a sick deer policy response policy. We've got sick deer information on the website for how what the public should do in responding to seeing sick, sick deer. We want to know about them. We want to get out there and remove them from the landscape and get them tested. And if you check out our website at our Wisconsin DNR website, keywords CWD, we have plenty of information on there, uh, constantly changing and updating it and keeping it current. 
on CWD as well as the keyword CWD response plan if you want to learn more about the plan itself and our process for um, getting us to the, the current version of our plan. All right, thank you.